May I ask you to take your seats?
you got it. Um, good afternoon again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, earlier on, we, we were receiving the family, uh, but they had asked to just be given a few minutes. Now that they are here, may I ask you to rise to welcome them? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, the Astrid chairs this side on my right for the family, uh, probably your left.
Those who are standing here in front, may you please uh, take your seats. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is um, Tutu Zimbada. I've been asked to co-program direct with uh, Tate Welcome and Somi um, in the official uh, memorial service to celebrate the life of uh, Brawili. This official funeral comes as a result of the declaration by the President of the Republic in terms of a special designation based on the contribution of uh, <coughs> Professor Hositile, or known as uh, Brawili. I'm not going to waste a lot of time. I'm going to ask the band to lead us in the singing of the national anthem. Then we'll proceed from there. I will ask all of us to rise in the singing of the national anthem. The family can uh, yeah, settle yeah, either way, but the family can sit. I will hand over to the band. Thank you very much.
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you may be seated. Um, I won't say much, but uh, we will proceed with the program. <clears throat> Let me just uh, acknowledge uh, Mayor Baby, the children, the rest of the family, uh, the diplomatic community, the struggle veterans of the movement that uh, Brawili saved for the rest of his life, the African National Congress, the artistic community, the literal community, and all those that have worked with Brawili in different uh, set sectors or settings in as far as knowledge is concerned. Because we all know that uh, Prawili, all that he wanted was to make sure that uh, as much as possible, the mind is free or is freed through knowledge. Um, just a basic announcement on your door at the back, when you turn right, it's the ablution facilities, uh, those who want to use them. Um, I think basically that's that. There will be other announcements as we move along in the program in terms of uh, refreshments, but there is water that is provided throughout uh, the day. Let me also acknowledge the, on behalf of the government, uh, MEC Mama Bulo who's standing in for the National Executive, but also for the Premier of Gauteng, Mr. David Makura. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Trevor Fowler to do an introduction to Prawili's life and times. This baby, the children, sisters, the extended family, MEC Mamabulo, acting premier, speakers, ministers, uh, deputy ministers, MECs who are present. MMCs, uh, executives of all spheres of government, former ministers, leaders of political parties, members of the NEC, PEC, comrades and friends. We are gathered here to pay tribute to the life of Professor Kiorapetse Jose Tsile, known to us as Brawil. On behalf of the family, I welcome you as comrades, fellow artists, fellow academics, fellow teachers, friends and compatriots in this celebration of life. A life of struggle to eradicate injustice, poverty and inequality. A life dedicated to the freedom for all. But in particular, freedom for artists, writers to express themselves not shackled by the chains of the past, but are empowered to fulfill their talents and share it with society. Kiura Petze Hosutsile was small in, in physical stature, but had a giant heart whose caring and kindness and all-encompassing humor warmed the hearts of people from South Africa to Africa from the USA to the Americas, both North and South, from Europe to Asia. Kio Rapetze Jose Tsile was humble, but was known throughout the world through his presence and literary works. 
ki Europetse Khosetsile. Was often diplomatic, though not too often, uh, but always spoke the truth in a manner that those who sought the darkness would be caught naked in the bright light of the truth. Kiro Petze was small in stature, but towered over those who shunned principle and integrity. It was a warm, sunny Saturday afternoon when I walked into the inner city cultural center of Pico Boulevard in Los Angeles over 30 years ago. I passed an old poster on the wall that said, Lena and the Busman, a play by Athol Fugard starring Zakes Mokai, who had acted in many films. The Inner City Cultural Center was home to many renowned black actors and writers, such as Bea Richards, Glenn Thurman, and Jean Boland. I then walked into the room and saw Brawili Khosetsil, much smaller than I'd imagined, about which I had learnt so much. As most of us were one younger than Brawili, his reputation preceded him. I heard about Brawili. Sorry. I heard about Brawili from amongst others Melma, Melba, his first wife, who I'd met several years before. I'd also had the honor of meeting Ipi Leng, Brawili's daughter at the New York office of the representative of the uh, chief representative of the ANC to the United Nations. She was a part of the young pioneers then, just a teenager. Brawili then gave gave his speech. And he regaled and enthralled the mixed audience of political and artistic uh, cultural activists with his poetry and irrepressible humor. Soon he had inspired the audience that they should bring the ANC, a cultural group, Amanda, to increase mobilization in California against the apartheid regime. The agenda for several months was how to raise money to bring the large group to California. This story is repeated several times in several countries and continents. It was the essence of the way Brawili lived his life. He later returned to LA as a professor at UCLA, as he had done in many other several universities in the United States, in Africa, throughout his life. I wish to quote from a friend in New York who sent me a message today. Uh, she's the daughter of uh, Louise Patterson and then Mary Lou Patterson, who were very close friends. Of uh, writers and playwrights. She said, and I quote, what impressed me about Willie was his modesty, no self-promotion. He had a wonderful sense of humor. One felt he didn't need to take himself seriously, but he took the movement very seriously and understood the role of culture that played not only in the liberation struggle, but also in the liberation of the self. It is a culture that brings it is a culture that brings out the best in everyone, expressing the true aspirations of a people and allows all a place. I want to thank Sis Baby and the children in particular and the family for sharing Brawili with the world. Like many of our icons, he was more often than not a way advancing the struggle and doing what he loved most, sharing his passion with the people of the world. Our gratitude to you is eternal. 
I am much richer for having known and learned from him. We collectively, as South Africa, Africa, and the world are much richer for him having touched our lives. I want to close with a few verses of one of Brawili's poems, which carries many of the messages that you will hear over and over today. As I said earlier, he was often diplomatic, but always spoke the truth. He was small in stature, but towered over those who shunned principle and integrity. It's a few verses from the poem, No Serenity Here. Even the sun, embarrassed, withdraws her warmth from this atrocious defiance of un un unbridled denial of ties that should bind us here and always. And the night will not own any of the stench of betrayal which has desecrated our national anthem. So do not tell me of Nepad or the OEU. Do not tell me of Sadak. And please, do not try to say shit about Ubuntu, Ubuntu, and any other neurosis of history. Again, I say, while I still have a voice, remember always, remember that you are what you do. Past any saying of it, our memories of struggle refuse to be erased. Our memories of struggle refuse to die. My mothers, fathers of my father and me, how shall I sing to celebrate life when every space in my heart is surrounded by corpses? Whose thousand thundering voices shall I borrow to shout once more? That is cup and delight. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fowler. I think uh, one of the things that we should say is that uh, the question that has been asked by many is how do you mold? Um, perhaps that, that is not the right question. How do we celebrate this life? How do we celebrate this big contribution made to the advancement and development of society by Brawi? Let me also acknowledge the fact that the ANC has asked the chairperson of the ANC in Johannesburg, Mr. Pakistan, who is here with us, who will speak on behalf of the ANC. Let us proceed with the program. Uh, like I said, uh, we are here to celebrate the life of the really. I'm going to ask um, the following speakers so that we don't come back. Uh, we had agreed with them that um, there is a specific time allocated. We also appreciated the difficulty that uh, the time given is not sufficient to talk and celebrate Brawili, but they did appreciate the fact that uh, there must be time allocated to speak. The first speaker will be Rax Siapa, followed by uh, Dr. Sibeleto Mukunumatabane, uh, Professor Mushengon, uh, Matabo Unene, uh, Sipio Mahala. May I ask them to come in that order so that uh, our program moves smoothly? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director. House Baby, Libana, Liluku, Maluku Kaufela leadership and membership at all levels of government and other sectors of human endeavors. Mema Tabo Nene, widow to our first poet laureate, 
Professor Maziz Kunene, an exec executive trustee on the Maziz Kunene Foundation, to which I'm privileged to serve. Colleagues, friends, comrades, ladies and gentlemen, I'll also try to keep to time, as a comrade Mdu here has said. Brawili, we met before we met. It was in the heady 70s, just on the eve of the 1976 uh, eruptions that shook the apartheid substructure to its very core that you gallantly marched into our youthful consciousnesses. Your larger, larger than life, your gigantic, lyrical, fiery lines of conscientizing, poetic mkhabulu illumined our fierce freedom march no power on earth could delay, nor even crush or stop, whether by intimidation, torture, imprisonment, maiming, disappearance, exile, or death. Your outlawed, uninhibited, and road-mapping work long before the rule of the internet, email, and cell phone miraculously and timelessly found their way to our forever thirsty and welcoming minds, arming us to the teeth to explode away oppression of one by another, preparing, preparing us for the long road to today's freedom's birth. What a marvel when we at last now met you in person, at last, at last. That was in 1990, just after you, with your sharp and bomb-like pen, pointed our oppressor's gaze to the writing on the wall. The writer's fraternity, through the Congress of South African Writers, you helped sire, welcomed you back like a long-lost guide you truly were. A never-ending festival of life-giving interaction ensued through poetry-laden social political workshops, politically nuanced and tempered poetics of our times in public readings, new dawn policy formulations, presentations and lectures, the, la the latter you said you never really liked, rather strange for such a towering and world-respected scholar and professor whose every breath was you as our untiring teacher. Post-exile, you wasted no time in getting us to walk with you the streets of our land, retracing your steps through the nooks and crannies of your being before Comrade U. R. Tambo called you abroad to help broaden, deepen, and rebuild our People's Parliament, the African National Congress, that the oppressor vowed to obliterate. Your intellect, unparalleled, the clarity of mind and thought, says like, drew queens, kings, presidents, ministers, premiers, and city mothers and fathers like moth to light, making you advisor of choice. We at the Writers' Association take pride in, with the assistance and partnership with the Department of Arts and Culture, being the lightning rod for the process of establishing the South African Literary Award that bestowed on you the title of the preeminent of the nation, the South African National Poet Laureate, after your elder brother and comrade, Professor Maziz Kunene, who handed to you this baton after his departure yonder. As we bid you farewell, Brawili, our most our foremost mentor, comrade, and lord star, we derived the solace in the fact that much to your chagrin and initial toy doing against our idea and intention of honoring you, your memory, and your precious, precious legacy with the Kyurapet City, the annual lecture four years ago, you, all, albeit reluctantly, acquiesced to our request and to the very end, gave it your unconditional support and presence at all the presentations thereof. Brawili, hard as it is, we have no choice but to accept your departure yonder in the full knowledge that with you and your forever beloved Oz Babies Abiding Council, in this the fourth anniversary of the Kyurapet City Day annual lecture, sadly now to become a memorial lecture, your four score coming of age, 
was or rather is going to be a bonfire literary affair like no other, letting countless flowers blossom and innumerable school of thought contend amongst your peers, friends, young and old, colleagues and all everywhere. This way, we shall and must salute you, our Prof, our National Poet Laureate, Abrawili. Brawili, you forever young. Thank you. Dr. Sibiletu. Basadi Dumelang, in particular, Baby Li Banabara Kosiside, Lila Bala Lolote, all around. When I was asked to speak, I kept thinking, what can I say about our dear brother and friend, Uili? The depth of loss is immeasurable completely immeasurable, and will be for a very, very long time to come. You see, Gorapes Yubilukosicile's wisdom, his clarity of mind, his irreverence, his incredible sense of humor, and yes, his mischievous smile and infectious laughter cannot be easily replicated by one individual. He truly was one of a kind. One of the qualities I loved about Willie was his command of the Sitswana language. Even after decades in exile, his Sitswana was flawless. When the subject of language would come up, he would frequently tell us he has no time for fools who leave home as young adults and after a short stay, say, in the USA or England, they would claim to have forgotten their home language while speaking with heavy, exaggerated English accents. Willie would simply say, I don't have time for fools. <laughs> By the way, uh, while living in Botswana, Willie was, Willie was introduced to Kosi Karesi Chele. Uh, and established a very deep relationship with him and the Molepolole village, now a small town, but the Molepolole village embraced him as one of their own. In that village, Willie would often go Ayako Kote and he would go there not as an observer or an academic studying Tswana culture, but as an active participant. That is how they wanted it, and that's how Willie also wanted it. So since his uh, passing away, I've received many, many calls from that community in Botswana, thanking the Kositsile family for sharing their son with them. Willie had an abundance of energy and staying power which is great because he loved to engage all those interested in the liberation of oppressed people everywhere, and saw literature, visual arts, and other artistic cultural forms as weapons against the dehumanization of the oppressed. Willie's home in New York was always full of fellow writers and poets and political activists, 
visual artists, and of course, us. There was always music and food and uh, drinks. And I must add that Willie was always generous to introduce us to his uh, peers in the literary world and wanted us to engage them. So it wasn't, I'm introducing you, introducing you to say Ishmael Reed or, you know, uh, Ayiguama or whatever it is, just so that you can be an observer. He wanted everybody to participate in the discussions because he thought that every single one of us could make a difference and must make a difference. So it was wonderful. It was a wonderful opportunity because, among other things, he'd always say, have you read such and such, or have you gone to see this play, or do you know this piece of music? So he was always, always educating, even as uh, he, in a sense, sort of entertained us. I have to just add one thing about Willie. Willie was street smart, and he left home as someone who was already street smart. I guess he got there from uh, the streets of Na Western Native Township, which was what was originally called Gas, uh, from West Dean Midley area now. And of course, he was also street smart in New York. Don Matera, uh, who knew Willie since uh, his teenage years, told me in Willie's presence about how he would sometimes come to Willie and Dinyani Matavani's rescue when gangsters were trying to rub them up. But he would also add, it's because of something they would have said or done. Willie would laugh, uh, and of course, add to a number of those stories about life in the townships uh, in those days before he left home. But even so, one of the things that Don would, would say is, Willie was always smart always interested in reading, always eager to engage uh, people. And his irreverence is a part of what uh, would rub some of these clevers the wrong way. But uh, there was nothing they really could do about it. He was lovable, as always. Others of his generation uh, also had a lot to say, you know, as I said, about his irreverence and all of that. They also talked about how he treasured honest friendships, and not mercenaries or opportunists. Willie was fearless and seldom hesitated taking on anyone whose views he disagreed with. He certainly was not shy to speak his mind in his iconic, deliberate, staccato style with emphasis, while some people would uh, rush to say anything, just to be heard speaking. He was deliberate in his delivery, as if imploring you or forcing you to listen and caution against running your mouth, as he put it, before you speak. The will I knew was brutally honest. This was one of his trademarks he did not think much of those who, for instance, would uh, use other people's works without acknowledging the source. And going you know, from university to university in the United States, I often heard him saying to the young students, you know, don't be lazy, read and think and put on paper what, uh, uh, what you believe. We need to have your opinion and acknowledge where you know, the sources come from, which one really you know, sort of appreciated. And coming from him, because he really was adored by uh, these young people, he was like, oh, okay, we hear you. Yeah. I will always remember Willie's sense of humor. He was, uh, as I said, a straight talker. His love of uh, people, his embrace of young people, as I said, and always making time for them to share and to learn from them. And it wasn't just here at home. That's part of, that is part of what people know about Willie throughout the world. Um, and of course, he never lost uh, the opportunity to tease those uh, 
who could not stay the course, uh, especially when, because he had lots of energy and drive. Uh, and you think he'd get tired and maybe say, I want to go take a nap or some such thing, but he never would do that. And so you look around the room and some of the people were much bigger and taller than he was, and he was still going. And the other ones were sort of slumbering, like, gosh, I need a break, but not really. Willie's poetry gave him the opportunity to travel far and wide. In the US, for example, his writings took him to universities, to workshops, to literary conferences and functions. He was constantly on the move. So much so that when you would get to his place and ask his little daughter, Ipilene, where his father was, she would say, airport, even though he would have been around because he always knew his father to be going to the airport uh, to you know, go do some work, cultural work in some place or another. I guess he hasn't gone to the airport now. We will not uh, ever see him again, but he has left us a fantastic legacy. So it's really up to us to pick up the baton and move speedily ahead. We'll miss him. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that uh, Ravili said when he received his uh, honorary from UNISA was that uh, a degree is not a terminal illness. He was addressing his son-in-law, so we'll have to always ask him when we see him that uh, what is the next degree is doing, and I suppose it goes to all of us. Professor Mushakon. Baby, you know, it, it takes me back to uh, two years ago when uh, you, Willie, myself, and my family spent some time in Senegal. But what I'm going to say today takes in what I've known about Willie for the last 45 years. Although Kiro Petsi Hosezile's poems have at their core only a single theme. His encounter with the world as politics. That theme can itself be divided into three different themes. The privacy of pain, of anxiety, and longing. Second, the difficulty of expressing pain, anxiety, and longing. And third, the social and political complications that arise as a result of that difficulty. Pain, anxiety, and longing, as we all know, have no voice. But when they ultimately find a voice, they begin to tell a story, often a very complex story. And the story that they tell, as they do in Hosilla's poem, is about the inseparability of these three themes their embeddedness in one another. When we hear about the pain, anxiety, and longing of others, the events happening within the privacy of their own inner worlds may have the remote character of fiction, belonging to an invisible geography that, however intense, has no reality 
because it has not yet manifested itself on the perceptible surface of language. Vague and unreal, pregnant with meaning, yet evaporating before us because not available to linguistic confirmation. Imperceptible squads of emotion and the anguish occurring in other people's inner worlds flicker before us, then disappear. Pain, anxiety, and longing occur, of course, not several kilometers away from us, but, but within the being of persons next to us with whom we each day collide. Whenever Hosea's poems achieve whatever lies in their extraordinary ability to communicate and share pain, anxiety, and longing for freedom. Hostiless poems develop the artistic tradition in African and African-American literature of reflection about a failure of mutual recognition and solidarity, and above all, the difficulty of being transparent to and for, and for others. Like Alex Lagoma, Eskian Pachele, Wali Sirote, Gwendolyn Brooks, Amiri Baraka, Brenda Marie Osby, and Tony, and Tony Morrison. He explores and excoriates our refusal to see, to inhabit states of being other, other than our own. He invites us to know and see more than we usually do. In this way, he works upon our inner eyes whose moral and political failures he castigates. Although he refuses the easy notion that mutual transparency can be achieved in one important, in one heartfelt embrace of compassion. But why, do, why take the bother to study his works? Just one paragraph, at least for now. The answer needs some elaboration. There are many forms of thought and expression within the range of public discourse from which all who live and work in South Africa derive the knowledge, intelligence, and sensibility to human values. The capacity for sound judgment, which is so far as possible also possesses, we all do need for serious work because on a daily basis we are called upon to make decisions. All who live and work here need knowledge of history and fact. In the last 24 years, we began to see how new laws, new policies, and strategies of different types provide a curriculum framework for solidarity and self-cohesion. But learning about many things does not produce empathic understanding. To become a citizen and a neighbor in our deliberative democracy, one must not simply amass knowledge. One must cultivate in himself or herself a capacity for sympathetic imagination. That will enable one to, com to comprehend the motives and choices of people different from ourselves, seeing them not as forbiddingly different, but sharing challenges and possibilities with them. Finally, says Baby, I should say now what I've been saying these last 40 years. I taught him here and I see the, and the pseudonym. I taught him the U.S. I taught him in England. 
that the gifts of hostileness, sensibility, and imagination are for all their intensity and power the gifts of a substantial human being. And this is the final impression I take from his work, that he was not bizarre or distorted, but in a profound way, fully and generously human, sane as well as brilliant, central as well as unique. And, it is, and, uh, and if it is true, as his poem so all too plainly that it is, that he followed the vocation of the artist and soldier, this surely is a route we all aspire to take too, even though ours may not be as intense and, and, and as excruciating as his. So, so that when he claims that we can find in his work an autobiography of pain, of anxiety, and, and long for freedom, and the courage to be free. This surely is a route we, we would like to take, and a journey we are all concerned with. Friend and colleague, please rest in peace. Thank you, Program Director, CSP, Jose Lefebvre, the Mohis, and uh, the Jams Archie family and relatives. Uh, to save time, I'll say all protocol observed. If I said I felt pain, I would be lying to myself again. I was simply numbed. Even my possible tears froze behind my eyes. This is from Chimit in Memoriam a poem by Professor Kyorabes Hosil. It is ironic that the ways to succinctly capture the essence of my loss on the passing of Professor Hosil should come from the man himself. His eulogy to the Mongolian poet, Shimit, captures my emotions as I come to terms with the loss of a man who had been more than a father to me. A very important part of me, of my life, has been torn away. Prof and I worked together at the Department of Arts and Culture for a period of 10 years. I first met him when I was a final year student at the University of Forte back in 1997. We had another encounter at Vates in 2002 um, when the Department of African Literature, uh, where I was doing uh, my master's, hosted Chino Achebe. We reconnected uh, at Asen Kasha in 2004, where he was special advisor to the then minister, Paolo Jordan, who's here with us today. And I was the head of, of the new books and publishing unit. This was the beginning of a very close working relationship that would last for a decade. Prof was a consummate intellectual and a brutally honest critic. You had to be knowledgeable and well read to hold a conversation with him. A conversation with Prof. Zille was a lesson in history, politics, philosophy, literature at the same time. He played a vital role in my growth as an artist and a civil servant. He was instrumental in the establishment of the Baobab Literary Journal and the Reprint of Classics projects. He was also a loose canon who had no regard for protocol much to the chakra of bureaucrats. When I make an appointment with a senior official, he often asks, why would you make an appointment with someone you pass in the corridors every day? So you barge into the offices without appointments and get work done. Our DG, Temba Wakashi, and his successor, uh, Sibuso Taba, got used to our ambush tactics. He always questioned the logic of having a large delegation 
when the job could be done by two people. In 2002, our two main delegation attended a conference in New York. While there, while there we met with some activists and together we visited Nat Nakasa's grave at the Fancliffe Cemetery. We discussed the possibilities of repatriating Nakasa's mortal remains back to, to home soil. The work be began immediately after our return and we were granted permission in the early months of 2014. When we landed at the King Shark International Airport on 19 August, amidst jubilation for the arrival of Nagasa's remains after 50 years of exile, my heart sank as it hit me that the man who should have been here, who was so integral in the process, was not with us. To those who had the privilege of being in his company, Prof. Fosili was more than just a poet. Many have rightfully stated that he was a very humble being with a great sense of humor. What is not often said is that he was also a shopaholic and a hopeless romantic. In 2006, we were in Vienna with several writers, including Lebu Mashile, Lisokhra Mbulukeng, and Zeik Sinda. But I really went shopping with Lebu and came back with bags full of new books and, and clothes, mainly for his wife. Pramanda Langa was so impressed that he asked Prawili to go with him the following day to also buy a few things. Prawili responded, no, Manja, they don't sell special there. <laughs> in 2010, we were in Edinburgh, Scotland, and there was a particular clothing item, item that caught my eye. The problem was that it was ridiculously expensive. I didn't buy it. The next day, I suggested that we go and check if it was still there. I did the same on the third day, and at this point, Prof said, Spiro, we can't keep looking at the same damn thing. Let me buy it for you. I found myself saying, OK, Prof, I'll buy it. I know you care about me, but I'm an adult. You can't buy underpants for me. <laughs> Lastly, in 2007, Havana in Cuba, Prof called me to his room very early one morning. He was still in bed, but he urgently wanted to read me a poem he had written that same morning. The poem ended with the words, should I love my heart more? Because every time I miss you, that is where I find you. It was later, <coughs> excuse me, it was later published as Letter from Havana, dedicated to see his wife. In every country I had been with Prof, there was always someone who knew him. A few years ago, Ngoki Wationgo shared the experience of seeing Prof Hosili accosted by admiring friends in the US. He says South Africans <clears throat> did not seem to realize the treasure they have in their midst. I always knew that I was in company of a giant, but his humility and unassuming character made everyone comfortable around him. When I received the news of his passing, I was with my family in the Western Cape. We drove back to Pretoria, and on arrival, I took my phone to call Prof and tell him we would travel safely. A habit I have become accustomed to over the past 14 years. It was at this moment that I felt a profound sense of loss. I suddenly became real. <coughs> I had to face the reality that never again will I hear his raucous laughter and see his broad, infectious smile. I took solace in the fact that I was privileged to have known him in his lifetime. And once again, my emotions find expression in his own words from Requiem from my mother. I do not know if you took your last breath with slow resignation, but this I know, I dare not look at myself in the eye peeled red with despair and important regret. Thank you. Mayor uh, Matabo.
I would like to greet and pay um, tribute to the family, Sis Bibi and the family, the African National Congress, and the city of Johannesburg for honoring Professor Khosetsile in this manner. It is a really fitting way for a giant like him. A lot has been said about Khosetsile. All I know is that each time he came to California and came to our home, I was ready to pack my bags and run. Imagine the two of them, Khosetsile and Mazis Unene, stubborn as ever, full of poetry and laughter and disdain for things that they thought were not really meaningful and deep enough to move the struggle forward. I want to say that it is quite strange that you live with a man and I write thousands of poems. And sometimes you take time to look through and find something that he said about you. I think I found one. I don't know how he got to write that one poem. But we're talking about a poem at a moment in time in the early 70s when South Africans arrived in the United States. It was a nurturing time for South Africans. It was an incredible time. It was at the very tail end of the uh, movement in the United States. And we were embraced. We were enriched. And I think Jose Sile and Mazisi enjoyed a lot of warmth. And I think I can safely say Mazisi Kunene wrote almost 70% of his poetry in that environment. And we must thank them. We must acknowledge them. It was not an easy time during Reagan's constructive engagement time. I want to say something very special today about a man called, a young man, Siapa, Rax, and Cindy. They have an incredible depth and recognition of what maybe adults should be doing. They nurture older people. They will go and find a person that you didn't think they would know. They would actually look after that person like Zayton Patlele. I cannot express it. When Mazizi was very ill, with not so many friends coming to see him, Cindy and Rax would come in the evening and ask to see him. Then I'd say, he's too ill, please. But as soon as Mazisi would hear Rax's voice, he would pick up. And I'd find them having a long discussion. How come? Because it touched him at a part, and he appreciated it. Rax, you're doing an incredible job. I remember you bringing Professor Chino Achebe on a wheelchair. You are deep. And I hope that the Department of Arts and Culture will always nurture and listen to your requests when you're looking for something. Sis Baby, I'm older, but I want to tell you, your job is only beginning. It is up to you to find every scrap of paper Nothing is too small. In my house, it's a rule, a liquid paper and jelly rubbish. Because right there, you would find everything that was very important. And maybe you might even find a few poems about you. 
Just not so long ago, I was clearing some papers. I found a, a piece of paper scribbled. Dagot and one and I think you occupied. He's a boy at the spin to two we peg a lag man. Now we're living in California, and I'm thinking he's writing to me this loud note about me cooking a little bit of liver. But because it's a message that I bring on behalf of my Zisipunene to his beloved friend and poet, I'm just going to, it's very difficult to find anything, but I think this one will work. It's in a collection called The Ancestors and the Sacred Mountain. Anthem of Peacefulness. The time has come to play the big drum, to make the path of the sun, to spread the message of the song, to prepare the great tale for the evening. This side of the mountains we stand, a vast shadow of the forest covers our feet. We are the proud children of the poets. We saw the overhanging clouds coalesce and the season open its wings of the night. The winds rushed to the impending rocks, whistling the flute song of the traveler. The shepherd boy heard him and came to him to sing the same song. The eyes of the poet greet the afternoon. Friendships long forgotten are rekindled. Slowly, words assume the authority of love. The grandmother of the quiet earth embraces us. Her communion travels through the whole universe. We are freed from pain by her eternal love. Thank you. Thank you very much, Member Tabo Gunene. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to make a transition. Um, <clears throat> Because uh, one of the things that I thought uh, Spio was going to say, there's this concept that Prof always spoke about when he described uh, certain behavior in people. He would say, uh, this short circuit. Uh, so it took me time to understand what uh, he really was talking about. But uh, at some point, somebody must explain uh, because you'd always be worried about uh, people not doing things right, including appreciating the importance of knowledge. Um, let me ask uh, the, the, the ANC chairperson of uh, Johannesburg, uh, Park Stau, to speak on behalf of the ANC. Immediately after that, I will hand over to Tundatem Somi, perhaps to Tundatem Jonas Kwangwa. Uh, to take it from there, and then that them soon will continue with the program. We'll come back later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Program Director, <clears throat> and thank you for your indulgence. This baby and members of the Kositsile family, MEC Jacob Mamabolo, and representatives of government, members of the Diplomatic Corps, comrades and friends. <clears throat> We are gathered here today to mourn the untimely passing of South Africa's National Poet, Poet Laureate, 
Professor Kurapetsi William Kositsile. This platform also allows us the opportunity to celebrate the life and legacy of the recipient of the National Order of Ikamanga in silver. One is acutely aware that as most of us celebrated the festive season, you as the family and loved ones had to endure the reality of his illness and hospitalization. Bakalusika Lokakositsile Jaka Bakaruna Baileta Fifing Kotswarana Kariku Momatsing O Arikita Nen Refeni Comrades Ladies and gentlemen, we pay respectful homage to an elder who was a fountain of sagely advice during apartheid and in the democratic dispensation. We honor an exemplary stalwart who was selfless in his countless contributions and tireless dedication to our people's struggle for a better life. His passing is not only a loss to his family and friends, but it is a grief equally shared by the local and international community. We will miss his unassuming presence in the halls of academia. We will miss his counsel in matters of government and industry policy concerning the fields of the creative arts. We will miss, we will miss his baobab wit in cutting to size those who have forgotten what it means to be public representatives. We'll miss his epic poetry, which is reasonably so comparable to the collected works of Pablo Neruda of Chile, of Jose Marti of Cuba, Leopold Senghor of Senegal, and Aime Cesar of Martinique. Our thoughts and prayers are extended to the Khositsile family for sharing their son, father, grandfather, and husband to the nation. In spite of his small frame, Brawilius was affectionately known, possessed a giant intellect and an X-ray sharp tongue. To him, the world of politics and the creative arts were mutually inclusive and reinforcing. Many things have and continue to be said about him, but it could never be said that he was an ivory tower intellectual. To him, being designated as a public intellectual meant that his poetry was informed by politics and politics was in eventually influenced by his poetry. I recall his much cited 2008 poem titled no serenity here. I hear him chant in the introductory stanza, stanza of this work, and I quote, an omelet cannot be unscrambled, not even the one prepared in the crucible of the 19th century sordid European design, when Europe cut up this continent into little pockets of its imperialist want and greed. It was not for aesthetic reasons nor was it in the service of any African interest, intent, or purpose, close quote. Prof would have penned these words, pained by the reality that the borders that today shape contemporary Africa have brought to us levels of chauvinism that betray our common heritage and indeed our collective history of struggle against colonialism, dispossession, slavery, and racial prejudice. You would have been pained by the sight of the dastardly acts of xenophobia and Afrophobia that became part of our reality in that year of 2008. You would have been embarrassed by the psyche that South Africans differentiated from their brothers and sisters north of the Limpopo by borders imposed by imperialist masters chose in his words to betray and desecrate our own national anthem. He not only warned us against the evil of chauvinism 
and prejudice. His lyrical words would always remind us that as leaders and public representatives, in particular those of the African National Congress, we are enjoined to place the plight of all our people, country and humanity as the most primary of our objectives. Also, his words ring true as we prepare for the 2019 national elections when the implementation of the National Development Plan will take center stage. As you all know, the NDP 2030 vision is our blueprint to unite South Africans, unleash the energies of its citizens, grow an inclusive economy, build capabilities, and enhance the capability of the state and leaders working together to solve complex problems. Our collective responsibility, therefore, under the leadership of President Cyril Matamela Ramaphosa and the entire leadership elected in December is to ensure that these ideals and aspirations are attained. We should commit to Brawili and the cohort of revolutionary ancestors he joins that were up to the task to inherit this responsibility and the movement they bestowed on us. Program Director, Brawili is a giant of our struggle because he lived by his actions and his words. We have learned from him that leadership ultimately is not concerned with the pursuit of selfish individual interest. <clears throat> Rather for him, leadership is defined by the pursuit of collective selfless interest. In our country, the demands placed on selfless leadership are underscored by the challenges we are faced with in an environment of diminished economic growth and the low commodity cycle. As such, we require leaders who will articulate a vision we can all share and aspire towards in application. We need leaders who understand the relationship between good governance and effective service delivery. Comrades and friends, many words have been spoken and much ink has flowed commemorating Professor Khotsitsile. What did it mean for him to be honored as the National Poet Laureate? Why was he bestowed with the order of Ikamak? There are select few creative people who are called Poet Laureates. Professor Khotsitsile joins the elevated company of another creative genius, Professor Mazisi Kunene, who was also honored as a National Poet Laureate. To be a National Poet Laureate implies the person represents excellence and truly becomes an ambassador of their country. In Professor Khosizile, we have in mind whose international stature is unparalleled in influence, in style, and aesthetic appeal. To be a National Poet Laureate meant that Brawili endeavored to speak truth directly to those in power. Since he was brave and fearless to confront apartheid, he felt duty-bound to caution those in our democracy who use high office for nefarious means. As his protege and author Mandalanga wrote recently, and I quote, Kositsile forces us to face our own imperfections, our collective disloyalty. He castigates the fat cat and the opportunist. He warns against false prophets and holy believers in the words he uses like a scalpel, close quote. He was a beneficiary of the Order of Ikamanga for his legacy and influence on the mus musical genres of jazz and hip hop. We regard him with a sage or cryot since he successfully merged our oral, oral traditions with, with postmodern forms of communication. He is arguably the grandfather of the decolonialism movement in the United States and in South Africa for his deconstruction of our pop-marked colonial heritage and post-colonial experience. Fellow mourners, it is not by coincidence that the worldly expertise of Professor Khosizile were counted on by several national cabinet ministers. These ministers were not merely impressed by the prof's wit and intellect. They relied upon his pan-African and cosmopolitan 
experience that was gained in global capitals in the US, Africa, and Europe. In his council, these ministers could depend on his learnings crafted and carved in his personal and professional interactions with luminaries like Amir Baraka, the last poets, Stokely Carmichael, Nina Simone, and Harry Belafonte. I am of the view that Professor Fosizile's legacy lives on not only in terms of stylistic influences on current generations of creative artists, but in his conscientious political activism. As we say, Kastwana, Sitlari, Sitsiwa, Kamuwa, Soina. As I conclude, allow me once again to borrow from the humanistic words of the wordsmith, of the wordsmith whose life we celebrate today. For we cannot, dear comrades and friends, celebrate this life if we do not reflect on his fears and aspirations, not for self, but for this beautiful continent of Africa and humanity as a whole. In another of his poems, Anguish, Longer Than Sorrow, he writes, and I quote, <clears throat> Refugee is an ominous load, even for a child to carry. For some children, words like home could not carry any possible meaning, but displaced, border, refugee must carry dimensions of brutality and terror. Past the most hideous nightmare anyone could experience or imagine close court. Yet these dear comrades are not just our imaginations, but the experiences of our daily, of our daily lives as we witness on our television screens, newspapers, and social media, the reality of the victims who die on the Mediterranean Sea in search of hope and the ability to dream. The sights of our brothers and sisters living in tents erected in refugee sites, the truth of Palestinians and Somalis whose experience of urbanism is the generations of existence they have spent in makeshift cities on foreign soil. To the family and friends of Professor Korapet William Hositsile, take comfort in the words of the Roman statesman Seneca when he said, the day which we fear as our last is but the birthday of eternity. May his soul rest in eternal peace and his words live with us forever. I thank you. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Where, by the way, we did not uh, apologize for starting 30 minutes um, uh, a bit late, but I know you'll understand. Thank you, Sis Bain, and thank you, the family, for allowing us to be a part of this memorial service. Briefly, why I'm also here and been asked to be a pro pro program di director is that uh, as a chairman of the Living Legends, we had many plans for all these Living Legends to continue to do master classes, and Brawili was one of them. And we will continue to see how we uh, make sure that the legacy continues. Just before I move on to the segment for poets, uh, I will ask Brajonas to say a few words and perform, and then we'll let you know about the segment of the uh, poets. Brajo. Uh, these cars 
must be moved. FS27 SR GP WRV803 GP. Otherwise, they are towing them away as we speak. This friendship started in a time when friendships could be sold for a shilling, when apartheid laws held a tight grip on people's loyalty and did anything to break a man to sell his mother, his brother, or his friend. I sat at the same desk in class with Willie. We shared a desk in Madibani High School after I left St. Peter's, 1957. That is, uh, what, 60, 61 years ago. There were two people named Willie in Madibani, and both of them were my friends. We were together from then and with what young people called today is keen. They knew each other because they came from the same township. I lived in Orlando East, and the two of them used to walk me to the bus stop so I could take the bus home or to the BMSC, where I had rehearsals because I was already playing the trombone. The other Willie, Matabani, was a known fighter. He was good with the I want to see the Tibali to say and all that. And, and they, they, they really knew him in the township, you know. And if you're wondering, he was Sibilito Matabani. We met again in New York where he was on a scholarship with various other students. They were taken from Tanzania by the State Department. Most of the students were PAC students, and there was only about four of us who were ANC. Willie, Joe Lowe, uh, Bethwell Stey <clears throat> and myself, we started to hang out, you know. I had uh, an apartment which I used to share with Huma Sikela, and that was in uh, 310 West 87 in New York. <clears throat> and we learned the things that you learn about a person when you live together. It was an unwritten rule that uh, when you go to 310, you must bring a six pack of beer and uh, a chunk steak. These are the students that were coming to 310. It became a place where one received most of the South Africans that came to the US, those that went to New York. We had a, a stove which had a, a grill on the top, and Willie could not reach that. <laughs> so uh, when I said, man, I can't keep cooking alone, you know, because we did live together at some time, he would take a chair, stand on it to bry this chuck steak. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> we, 
we hung out together, you know, and uh, he, he wasn't a good cook because uh, he would uh, try to cook and read. It would be uh, books and booze, books and booze, you know. You know, the, the, the beer, and if we had a little bit more change, we'd delve into the brandy, South African style. Uh, <clears throat> I left the U.S. on a concert tour with uh, Kaifa Semenya and Lejan Bulu, and then stayed on in Botswana. Then in 1977, we, I took a group of musicians. We went to Nigeria to Festac. That's when I met Willie in Tanzania. He was in the ANC office there, but he was still studying. In New York, there was a, a time when some ANC leadership went to speak at the UN, and uh, that was Dumanoque, Tennyson, Makiwani, Robert Hershey. They were hosted by Miriam Makeba, who offered to have them eat at her place, because they were just given a radius of five miles around the UN. So they had their meals at Miriam's place. And uh, we went to see them with Willie. Then they decided to have Miriam Makeba make a speech. But they locked Kositile in a room and said, you write the speech. So the famous speech that was made by Miriam Makeba at the United Nations was written by Willy Kositsile. <clears throat> we had been to Nigeria, and uh, that's where we both worked on a show for the ANC because there were various caters of the ANC that came from all over the world, different disciplines, singers, dancers, actors, painters, sculptors, all, all kinds of people, writers, poets, and all that. So <clears throat> we worked on the show for the ANC, because this was a very big festival, Festa, the Festival of Arts and Culture, which was a festival of all blacks and third world countries. We co-directed the show that went on tour in Tanzania, in Zambia, in Mozambique, this was an, uh, an ANC show. Then uh, we came back. I came back to South Africa. And we met again for the third time. After, of course, being in Botswana for some time, because uh, after the tour that I had, the concert tour that I had with Kaifas and Letta, I stayed on. And uh, <clears throat> he came to Botswana. Thank you. He came to Botswana, and uh, whilst he was looking to find a place, we stayed together again while she was waiting for his wife then, which was a, a 
Mesu bale gambe che. Then, uh, of course, we came back to South Africa and uh, we've been around working together, doing all kinds of shows. The last, the last time I saw Willie was in November. There was a young man who was trying to put together a show, a musical, and uh, he wanted Willie and I to produce that. And uh, he came to my place and we met with this young man. That was the last time I saw him. It was outies together, you know, me from Orlando, him from West End, you know, you know, the guys, but, but witty. You see? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, with the guys who, 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 who used to call Willy Chili Willy. It don't penguin how Chili Willy. He was a hell of a guy. You know, he loved jazz, and we were always discussing and playing records together and things like that. He knew, he knew quite a lot about jazz, you know. He'll be missed. It was a hell of a war. I thank you. We're going to do a song which you really love very much.
also celebrate. It is this celebration we're talking about. Deep in your cheeks, your specific laughter owns all things south of the coast. We once were straight ahead. The memory beckons from the future. You and I, a tribe of colors, this song, the dance, godlike rhythms to birth, footsteps of memory, the very soul aspires to songs of origins, songs of constant beginnings. What is this thing called? Love. That comes from if I could sing by Brawili. Now, we come to the segment of uh, the poets. Uh, the poets have words that they want to share. They have a history that they want to share. So, they know themselves, but I'm gonna call them. Levo Mashile, Natalia Molebazzi, Philippe Yadivilias, Kusitaba, Silomage, Kangube, and Steve Dyer. So I'm not going to be calling you one by one. You know what to do when you perform. Ladies and gentlemen, our poets.
Beware, my body and soul. Beware above all of crossing your arms and assuming the sterile attitude of the spectator. Because life is not a spectacle. Because a sea of sorrows is not a proscenium. Because a man who cries out is not a dancing bear. This is an excerpt from Amos says, Return to my native land. And I just thought this excerpt just captures for me the soul of Brakosi, Brawili, Brakosi Tsile. Brawili. It is so funny that we South Africans, we call a man who's in his 70s, Bra. <laughs> you know. But I remember an incident in Zimbabwe when I first Brawi met Brawili. And I was sitting with Brazeiks, Mukai. And along um, among us was Ndate Nakan, Ndate Lionel Nakan. So what was interesting was every time I spoke, Lebon, I would say, hey, Brazeiks, you know this and this and this. And then when I addressed Ndate Nakan, I would say, eh, why isn't Ndate Nakan this? And Brazeiks went, Ladies and gentlemen, my tribute for Brawili starts with a poem by Stephen Spender, The Truly Great. And it goes thus I think continually of those who were truly great who from the womb remember the soul's history through corridors of light where ours are sons, endless and singing, whose lovely ambition was that their lips, still touched with fire, should tell of the spirit clothed from head to foot in song, and who hoarded from the spring branches the desires falling across their bodies like blossoms. What is precious is never to forget the essential delight of the blood drawn from ageless springs, breaking through rocks in worlds before our earth. Never to deny its pleasure in the morning's simple light, nor its grave evening demand for love. Never to allow gradually the traffic to smother with noise and fog the flowering of the spirit. Near the snow, near the sun, in the highest fields, see how these names are fated by the waving grass and by the streamers of white cloud and whispers of wind in the listening sky. The names of those who in their lives fought for life, who wore at their heart the fire's center. Born of the sun, they traveled a short while toward the sun and left the vivid air signed in their honor. But I welcome Unzeni Mopili, Aidira Origins, but I'll conclude with a poem that I recited. I'm not a poet, I'm, I'm an actor, <laughs> acting out to be a poet. <laughs> but Brawili, I recited a poem for the first time. I remember we were in um, Windy Brow, and I recited a short poem of mine that I had written called Siazazi. And it goes like this. From the bowels of Dubiti, once proud beings, then reduced to a corrosive humility. Our souls disgracefully packed and sold. Times tick 
turned the meek to bold, elevating our spirit to a height, much to perplex arrogance might. Cause now, Siazazi, we know who we are. Thank you very much. Just finish this part. Uh, you will be definitely given this important opportunity. I agree with you. Thank you. If I could sing notes from no sanctuary. No matter. 
matter what it is wrapped up in. Two, how many deaths and specific how or when ago when it was said where to go is what to do. Still, we talk so much and the cold black hustlers of my generation claw their way into the whitenesses of their desire and purpose. Here, slaves room is a commodity the hustler peddles, newly wrapped in brother, sister, revolution, power to the people. So now, having spoken our time and reference, the people's soul gangrened to impotence, only obscene black and white together, culture shit of mystified apes. Where then is the authentic song? The determined up against the wall motherfucker act. So, say you, say you float above this menace, having violently tasted white shit past the depths of any word you know. Say you float above the dollar green eye of the hustler whose purpose is cloaked in dashikis and glib statements about revolution. Say you float untouchably above this menace. Does your purpose, if there be one, propose to be less impotent than this poem? about his poetry and his jazz and his brotherhood and his politics. And that is what we echo. I'm going to read from The Present is a Dangerous Place to Live. And this one is titled For Huey Masekela. like words or songs 
like obsolete tools, like your mother's after birth, rending, yes, we travel, we travel, we travel, we move closer apart, don't we know that even the sun can be brutal? This. I'm going to read from Rawili's book, If I Could Sing, and I'm going to read a poem that he calls, Even Skin Disappears. It's a poem about love, a poem that's erotic, but I'm choosing it because I met Rawili's words that are about the armed struggle being an act of love. And I simply enjoy his love and erotic poetry. Where he feels he might explode to smithereens. of 
the body is recognizable from any other. Here, boundaries between two people disappear. Even skin, as everything else, disappears. Even thought takes leave of absence. identities here. The sword in the ceiling of her thigh disappears. Language itself rendered speechless disappears. Where would any naming of this new arrangement come from? of this new arrangement come from. Thank you. family for sharing. Thank you to the man for sharing. I also met Bravili through, actually through Vusi Mahlasela's rendition of Red Song. And in Cuba, I first learned how love and struggle are intertwined. So I would like to read Procreation for Pharaoh Sanders. Music as language looking into the world with the spirit of a people identifies itself more precisely than label and is there always coming from every place Pharaoh has been Africa Asia and our long memory
continuities. Yes. The song, Memorial and Now. It is from now. Pharaoh takes our ear, breaking the silences of our spirit and walls. Remember, Spirit has moved him. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So now, this is a singing session. So I don't know if uh, if uh, Professor Momwala is going to sing as well. Please, Professor, please do come up. Thank you. Thank you. Family members, friends, comrades, all protocols observed. It is indeed my honor to deliver the words of gratitude to our poet laureate, Professor Hosisile. Though small in stature, the professor was not an ordinary man. When I think of extraordinary men, Mr. Machona Diwayo reminds us that, I quote, ordinary people pursue money. Simple people pursue power. Average people pursue fame but extraordinary people pursue ideas. Professor Hosisile was an extraordinary man, and he pursued ideas. For a nation devoid of ideas shall surely die, and a nation full of ideas shall succeed. His passion for the spoken and written words was unparalleled. I first met uh, the professor in 1989. Not physically met him, but uh, when I was still in high school, one of the prescribed poems was actually his poem. 
His ability to convey the collective consciousness of the South African people through words remain inspiring. The professor was not a selfish man. He spent uh, a great deal of time sharing his ideas with our students at the University of Johannesburg. His passion for people is something that we should emulate. Uh, his patience, sharp mind, humor, and eloquence were extraordinary. He was a person who valued our culture. In this regard, I quote uh, some of his uh, writings. All cultural explorers start off from specific roots which color their vision and define the alliances of the work of art they produce, close quote. The professor's words shall remain etched in the collective memory, uh, specifically of our institution. And this morning we were deliberating as to how we, we can honor such a great uh, man, and we have recommended that a hall at the University of Johannesburg be named in his honor. In closing, I would like to quote um, parts of the work from his work, If I Could Sing. All things come to pass. When they do, if they do, all things come to their end. When they do as they do, close quote. Professor Hosisile Rowala Kakoso, this way I salute you, Ndiyaribu. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Marwala. Um, uh, Ntatem Sumi has asked that uh, because the people I'm about to call are young people, I must come up and call them. I um, uh, <laughs> don't know why. Can we call uh, Kabomu and, uh, and the team um, to come up and uh, render a musical item? Um, Stumi, Kia, and uh, Kabom. I see he's walking up. Um, there was a, a, an important request, and I think uh, immediately after them, we will allow uh, the African National Congress to sing a revolutionary song, because uh, indeed uh, Prof was a revolutionary. Over to you, uh, Kabom. And uh, yeah. Mogi kyo rapeti. Muruka puoma fuku mutakeledi. Muroka wapula tapoko di popota. O kalimile kama fuku wa ite isa taulele si didi. Kawena, kabutaki rebato. Tamaha hutuma dinale beng. Ki ukuba meti wapoko mudimu ki urapeti. Haja ana retrofeti uretroheti rakabeti. Udi kwa lo di humileng di popo malo bebe. Bakha etu talola khomwe bolo kankosi khalela tre. 
ka lona a ri phute mirafe masiela a poko a lelwe phate o ke o rapetse ka mafukwa feletse mo khankhara ka botlhale botlhantletse o nnile malome wa thariyentso o lomagantse o khobokantse khumo ya kitso o e re arogantse o mogoludi mogakoludi kk o le rumo la sechaba le tsitseng lusaka o mogaka o senang dikhoka re ka go botsa khakala ga mawatle a merika ke tla ya semotswane ke ya mandunyane go ithuta ka ga phofu phelefu tsa ga motebejane e re go boa ke khabaganye kwa dithakong tsa morolong ke ba kholele go go gamela khatseleganong ke o rapetse o mala wa go ka bokelwa ruri o ka ne wa maina mafatshwa go fitla le fatla le mela moriri fa o ne o katelwa ka tlalo ke ne ke tla go tsomela tshukudu o tlabele pele o tlhamala le ka lonaka o tlhamaganye kitso ya setso robala buroko morwaneo ba hurutsi ba tle ba re ke ne ke fudile ka tlatsa ka khopiwa ka relela ka wa pabalo tsa ya le maritse matlapa e tshwa boreti sileng sa bo sile musimeng wa mathaela thupana musima musita ba lekanye nna ga ke itse se khowa ba ga etso me fela se se botlhokwa ke gore nkare rest in majestic revolutionary peace poetic shadows of eternal greatness comrade wili I was on uh, I was on tour a couple of years ago and uh, in New York and I, um, I was talking to one of my bandmates in Zulu and an elderly American man took interest in, in, in us and he asked me, young man, where are you from? I said, I'm from Johannesburg, South Africa. He said, oh, Mandela. And I said, yeah. Um, he asked me, what am I doing here? And I said, uh, I'm a musician, I'm here on tour. He said, ah, what instrument do you play? And I said, um, I actually rap. And he said, oh, hip hop. And then he started to tell me about, you know, he can't get, can't really understand the younger stuff, but in his days he liked Rakim and Karis One. And we went on for quite a long time talking about hip hop music. And, you know, when, we, when we're done, it dawned on me that it's a bittersweet moment because here I am talking to an elder and I'm not some amoral delinquent. You know, we're talking as equals. He's, he's, we're engaging on art and I felt a sadness because where I'm from generally, we're not always perceived like that. And the only times that I got that sense was when I spent time with Ntata Khosisi. I had no business calling him Brawili, but he allowed me to. He, he wanted me to be comfortable. He wanted us to be comfortable. I think he saw in our quest, in our journey, a mirror of his journey and he nurtured that for us. He drew a clear line of lineage from what they were doing in the 60s and 70s to what we were doing. He linked playwrights and writers to rappers and spoken word poets. I am honored and in <laughs> and grateful that I could spend a little bit of time on this planet with him. 
Mama was a soldier, Papa was a preacher. That's a Bible and a rifle. Tell me that don't make believers. How you get freedom by even in the odds. Every evening she was cleaning the Kalashnikov. Show difficulty should be met with much resolve. Show me discipline. If they're not with you, fuck them all. If you USSR, I'm a product of the USSR. I seen a gun before a basketball. Son of a Kada, only one of them made it. Some agent laced my daddy whiskey with some foreign agent. Collapsed, he gasped, died on the doctor's lap. Apartheid operations. <laughs> Doctor pass. Now tell me that don't rub you up the wrong way. These corridors of power filled with cowards playing comrade. The worst master was the former slave. The forecast said it's war again. The warrior is born again. Thank you. Son of Milan. My memory of that was that he was so generous with his time and his experience. Um, and they say you judge a man by what he leaves behind, and he leaves behind a, gen a generation of young writers that he spent so much of his time nurturing. Um, and in the same sentiment as Dumi, the most remarkable thing about Brawili was how much, how selfless he was with his time. Um, he was never too busy to, to give a word. If we're doing a session and we call them a day before, you know Brawid would come and he'd be present and he would contribute. And for that, I'm thankful. I remember him with a song that I did not write, but I, I think it's appropriate. The world changes, revolutionaries die, and the children forget. The children forget the ghetto is our first love and our dreams are drenched in gold. We don't even cry. We don't even cry. We don't even cry about it no more. Are the beautiful ones Pretty days. Since the bell of bass is our long gobani. Since the bell of bass is our long gobani now. Since the bell of bass is our long gobani. Since the bell of bass is our long gobani now. Sizzle <laughs> Um, now, Kabazel, DG, it's your turn uh, to give us your pearls of wisdom. Um, Kabazel, he's a very important person, very, very important. You know, you have to be nice to him, otherwise you're not going to get anything. He has put in a lot of work here, and we thank you. Sure. Okay, my pleasure. Yeah, I Program director, this be, because it's a family. The MECs, political representatives, members of the diplomatic corps, senior government officials, esteemed authors, and artists here present. 
all the, the ministers and ex-ministers and our home, Prof. Barajo Sicile worked. Distinguished guests, it is a sad day for our nation as I address you on behalf of the Minister, Minister Natim Tetwa, the Minister for Department of Arts and Culture, who could not be here with us today, but has sent his heartfelt condolences. And he says, first and foremost, we as South Africa should acknowledge that a mighty baobab tree has fallen. Today we pay a tribute to a great man whom we can truly say was a man of the people. He was a husband, a father, a soldier, a freedom fighter, and a writer whose words speak eloquently of the times we live in. He was an icon. He was a man of distinct writing skills. But he was not just a good writer. Professor Hosecile was a magnificent writer. His poems grew from their roots, yet they aimed for the stars. He had his eyes that contemplated the past we should not forget. He addressed the travails of the present, and he pointed the way to the future. His was a vision of people, but also one of forewarning. With utmost truthfulness, he also warned of shortcomings in the present that could present perils in the future. All the time, he raised consciousness among his audience using the power of pen, which he understood that an idea kept in the mind of one without being translated and documented, that idea might not bear fruits of its intention. He did so in a way that was unassuming and contemplative, as if poised in the middle of a thought, yet he was assertive. In a quiet and pointed way, he brought the message home to the audience and to his readers. And this is the mark of greatness, not of any kind of greatness, but that which is soulful yet tangible, of great depth and profound, yet measured and enforced. He did not shout but soothed us, and in his soothing, he healed us through transmitting an idea which could change the individual and also change the world. This is the stamp of a real organic intellectual, yet he also embraced learning and the power of reading. He encouraged study and the need for the potency of words that are well thought out and full of meaning, fulfilling its higher mission. And he was at home in this world as an African Renaissance man, even before we spoke of African renewal. He was at home in Harlem, equally so in Dar es Salaam, and in his beloved Johannesburg. Exile had forced him abroad, but what, wherever he went, he excelled. He influenced generations of writers, both in America and at home. His writing had music and passion and was rooted in an African worldview. He broke barriers. As a member of the arts and culture family and with the title of Poet Laureate, he led South African authors' delegations to events all over the world and he hosted workshops and mentorships at home to encourage new writing, including a part of the Living Legends Legacy Program. His presence at these events was inspirational and educational. He played a magnificent role and part in bringing back the remains of the great Net Nakasa. He represents South African authors at African diaspora events as far afield as Jamaica and Ghana, among other places. How then should we best inscribe his memory and his legacy? We shall honor him like that 
other laureate, our poet laureate, Mazisi Guneni. By ensuring that as a national government, we shall intensify our efforts to tell his story, share his writings, and make his works known to others. We have a responsibility that the libraries that we have in government have the books, the works of these laureates. The Demand of Us and Culture is initiating plans for his works to be prominent in these libraries and discussed in reading clubs. We commit to improving conditions of our writers through interventions in the planned copyright legislation and intellectual property rights. We have also embarked upon the establishment as well as resuscitation of a new venture, a publishing house. Together with the National Library, this book house will have its focus in publishing of biographies and topographies in its initial phase. As part of the telling of the South African story, as well as a writing by new and aspiring authors. In these ways, we shall act in a manner that is true to the legacy and guidance of Professor Kioropesi Prawili Khosicile. In the words of Prof, of Prof himself, from his poem, Wounded Dreams, and I quote, when we have walked through the restless shadows of wounded dreams and come back from tomorrow together, we shall know each other by the root and texture of our appetite, I close quote. May our baby and the rest of the Kusila family and fellow writers find consolation in that despite all our sorrow at his passing, his words live on. His legacy remains, and every day he will continue to grow roots through all of us. Working in the Department of Arts and Culture, the number of years he spent there are not a description of his contribution. His contribution reverberated beyond all that, and we shall make sure that his legacy never dies. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Director General of the Department of Arts and Culture. We now have a responsibility to continue with uh, preservation and indeed the promotion of the contribution of uh, Brawili so that uh, generations to come can know uh, the contribution made by him, including the fact that uh, we need to emulate and build more of people of Brawili stature. Let me move on with the program and ask the member of the Executive Council, Mr. Jacob Mamabulu, to make remarks on behalf of the Gauteng Provincial Government and indeed government. Um, immediately after that, uh, we will make an announcement including the commitment I've made to comrades on the, the singing of the Fair Revolutionary Song. Over to you, MEC. Thank you very much, uh, program directors. Let me just up front acknowledge the excellent work both of you are doing, and thank you for the good work. Now to Mama, baby Dokas, Hositsile, to the children, the family and relatives, current and former ministers, deputy ministers, MECs, mayors and MMCs, MPs and MPLs, councillors, director generals, heads of departments, senior government officials, ambassadors present, leaders of all aligned structures, our veterans and stalwarts, international guests, friends, comrades, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the national and of course our Gauteng government, provincial government, led by our Honorable Premier David Mankura, I'm glad and sincerely pleased to convey our condolences on the occasion of this memorial service 
of the late Professor Kurape Tsukhositsile, affectionately known as Brawili. Kindly allow me to say that due to time, and of course, considering the situation of the family, I plead with all of you present that the speakers who have already spoken, sharing their different experiences, and of course, direct life experiences with Prawili, have beyond doubt done the work by paying a memorable tribute to Prawili. They have successfully and in the most persuasive, remarkable and befitting manner introduced us deeply into the life of a stalwart, the Mataya, the gallant fighter and combatant of our liberation movement, Prawili. In other words, all I can say now on behalf of government is to thank all of them, appreciate and acknowledge your eloquent and moving tributes. You have made this memorial service of the great professor remarkably successful. You have said it all, making my job simple. And let me upfront just thank all the workers, our staff working with the family for having made this memorial service a successful event. And thanks to all of them for an excellent and sterling work. Let me also thank the family for affording us the opportunity to pay tri tribute and bid farewell to Prawili. Comrade Trevor Fowler, thank you very much. All tributes by all poets, by the entire arts and culture community, by uh, Director General uh, of the Department of Arts and Culture, Kabazela Vusi, Vusi Muzim Kize, who used to be my boss at some point in life. Tribute by the entire intelligentsia and academia, all the good music and poetry, all the artistic work on stage and in the hall. And of course, let me acknowledge tributes made by Comrade Park Star on behalf of the entire alliance. I must also commend all the media houses and staff for keeping our people informed about Prof. Willie, who really is the embodiment and personification of the best that humanity can be. To the entire family, Umama, the children, and the entire relatives, please find comfort and warmth in the tribute and words of everybody that spoke here, rendered a poem, sang. I think all of them have done a good job in their words, find comfort. But also, Brawili himself, would have said, and of course, the Vice Chancellor of UJ has already quoted this part, but he would have said to the family, open quote, all things come to pass when they do, if they do. All things come to their end when they do, close quote. I must say, Brawili was quite ahead of us because he clearly understood that things including life come to pass, come to their end when they do. His towering weights, are a monumental script of comfort and warmth. Program directors, allow me to conclude by saying to Brawili himself, you have lived your life to the fullest. You have shown beyond doubt that it is possible to be successful and still be very humble. You have demonstrated that your excellent achievements should serve as a source of inspiration, courage, and motivation. You have taught and educated us that success and exceptional achievement, especially in scholarly and literary work, should not be a source of humiliation for others, neither a source of belittling others and make them feel very small and treat them as perpetual failure. We admire you cause, because you understood that education is a tool of liberation and freedom, and certainly not humiliation. This you did because you understood that many of us and people who have not achieved what you have achieved do indeed love education, but except for history, circumstances, and difficult conditions, that militated against their pursuit of education and knowledge. We admire you 
because you never used your remarkable and excellent achievements to break, to look down upon others for self-praise, because you understood that the very founding fathers of our national liberation movement you dearly love were themselves, are themselves, and will forever themselves be scholars. You have left us and future generations with a rich legacy and monumental scholarships as a point of reference for future generations. You have demonstrated that it is possible to excel in many aspects of life and still commit your life and sacrifice for the cause of humanity. You have given us your life of love, of courage, militancy, scholarship, honesty, and integrity. You gave us life of morals, ethics, and humility. You served your people, country, and the world without taking anything from them. Your untimely death followed soon the successful 54th National Conference of the movement you dedicated your life to, served to the best of your ability, and never diminished its standing in society. Your untimely death came at the, on the eve of the birthday celebrations of the movement that you dedicated your entire life to. Your untimely death came at the time when your movement celebrated the year of war time when now that of Nelson Mandela, leaders you worked with and some held in high regard. Let your soul rest in peace. In the knowledge that the struggle you and many others wait still continues. The government you helped put in power is still committed to the ideals you lived and died for and will never betray them. As you, as you yourself said, that freedom and liberation is not about the flag or national anthem, but is truly about the quality of life and the better standard of living for the people. As government, we ensure to continue as a Cuban revolutionary will have reminded us that ideas never die Ideas live longer, and your ideas will certainly never die. In that regard, Brawili, the struggle continues. Aluta continua. Rest in peace. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Mamabulo, uh, who is also the secretary of the South African Communist Party in Gauteng. We have uh, come to the end of the speakers in terms of our program. Um, one of the things that uh, we have to acknowledge is that uh, former ministers of arts and culture uh, were also here, but also they've been part of us. The other one is the friend of uh, Prawili. Uh, and then the majority, the staff members who have also worked with Prawili are also here including those that have worked with Prawili in his last post, which is where he started at the African National Congress, specifically at the Root First House here in Gauteng. Let me um, ask um, uh, <clears throat> one of the family members uh, to come and uh, do a vote of thanks. And that is um, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Kingdom Loloane. After he has done the vote of thanks, we will then make uh, announcements. Thank you very much. Um, uh, thanks, Program Director. Um, my name is Riatile Kingdom Lolwani. Um, Brawili and my dad are cousins, so that makes me his nephew. Um, now, on behalf of uh, our baby and our families, we wish to express our sincere thanks to first the national government for having made this uh, event possible 
um, were grateful that uh, grateful and and, and uh, we humble ourselves to everyone who took time to come here and uh, to remember um, our loved one our, our loved one uh, professor Kiora Petsi Hositsi. Um, we thank the dignitaries, we thank uh, the poets, we thank the music, we thank, uh, we thank all of you people um, for uh, the compassionate uh, words that you have extended to us as a family. Um, we are saying uh, we, we, we uh, wish every one of you a, a, a memorable period where um, if all of us can provide this kind of support, um, then uh, we are a united society. Uh, with this baby here, we say, uh, um, and all our family members, we wish to, uh, to further say that uh, we we are humbled by your presence, and uh, we are humbled by all the the rendi re renditions, humbled by all the the good words, humbled by every step that uh, uh, every initiative that you know people have taken to be present here. We wish to uh, uh, again reiterate our sincere thanks to. Uh, government for uh, declaring uh, the state funeral for our uncle and uh, we thank the ANC, we thank all those people who um, um, were wonderful to us as a family, joint families. Uh, with those words, I can't uh, spend too much time, we are simply saying thank you, thank you. Comrades, you can uh, sing one revolutionary song. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, allow me to, to make the announcements just before we, we leave. Um, I see uh, comrades uh, Dan uh, Monsisi there. Comrades, the funeral is on Tuesday, the 16th of January. The procession will start at home in Deep Kloof, number 1212, from uh, 7 to 8. But that is a family a private uh, service. We urge all of you comrades, friends, colleagues, 
to be at Max Park by latest half past eight or quarter to nine, so that by nine o'clock we are we, we start with the service. Uh, lastly, there will be an announcement to structures of the ANC as to where the buses will be. I will ask the our ushers and the MEC to walk the family back to where you, you, you started before you come here. Uh, let, let me thank every one of you. Thank you very much. Uh, Pumla. Um, the, the band will play for those of you who will be uh, listening. Thank you.